ask that you will in this service speak to us again let the spirit of revelation be upon your word this morning in the name of jesus that our eyes will be open and that our spiritual understanding will be enlightened i ask that no man will go home empty but rather our father we will receive of you that which will make us functional believers in the mighty name of the lord jesus praise the name of the lord uh before i begin to speak <clears throat> uh while i was putting my thoughts together upstairs one of the ministers came to me and said pastor promised to look at the sound in the church yes i did and we are indeed addressing it we have started addressing it but i just want you to be patient with us we don't want to do things haphazardly number one we wanted to ensure that upstairs is well secured and secondly we don't want to put anything there until the protector on this side if we check that place now all we still need some help as to finishing what we have started it's plenty of money but nothing is too small we need nothing less than another one million to get that place functional so you can see that as the Sierra Leoneans will say, to keep be one box, now only a hand con short. But God will make our hand long. Praise the name of the Lord. So this morning we started a theme on understanding the person or understanding the Holy Spirit. And we we're looking at the person, the person, the personality of the Holy Spirit. And we first took a look at the person of the Holy Spirit as the scripture tells us, because like I shared with the first service, Men have done and said things that have made the Holy Spirit to be misunderstood and misrepresented. And like I said, if you go to any of these white garment churches, what you see men say is the manifestation of the Holy Ghost is men that are doing like this. As if they, they are having conversion. Those two movements I did just now, they took power from me. If what, that's all I'm going to be doing all my life, then I don't think that's what I want. 
Hello? So that's it. We said that the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, is the Spirit of God, and we have various manifestations of his person. I don't want to go into all the details, but we concluded in that service that one thing about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament is that when there was need, he came upon people. He came upon them. But in the New Testament, there is an added dimension. And that's what we are going to be looking at this morning. Praise the name of the Lord. John chapter 14. Please open to it. John chapter 14. From verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. That he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because he seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Chapter 16. Verse 5. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me, whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. Of sin because they believe not in me, on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you and you see me no more of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Praise the name of the Lord. In John chapter 14, the Lord Jesus began to address the disciples. and He told them, believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Go to pay a place that when I am done I will come like my bride I will take you that you may be where I am also. Praise the name of the Lord. When he said this to them, their hearts were filled with sorrow. Jesus, you are leaving us. In this hostile environment, your presence with us, we are going to miss it greatly. And that's why he told them in John 16, 
it is expedient that I go. Because if I do not go, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, that I plan to sin will not come. The first thing we need to know was that the bodily presence of Jesus was restricted. It was only in Jerusalem. But the presence of the Holy Spirit is universal. As God is moving here today, He's moving in England, He's moving in Japan, He's moving in the United States. Wherever man is found, the Spirit of God is at work. And so it was expedient that Jesus leaves so that the Holy Spirit will come. So that his presence in the whole world can be effected. Because the salvation that God has planned for mankind was not restricted to Jerusalem. It was for the whole world. Praise the name of the Lord. So he begins to speak to them. And he knew that his presence would create a vacuum. So in verse 16 he says, I will pray. John 15. Like we read. I will pray the Father. And he will give you another comforter. Jesus himself was the comforter but he says here i will pray the father to give you another comforter and he shall that he may abide with you for how long forever forever so like i said in the old testament when god wanted to use men his power came on them and when the deed was done, they returned to their normal state. But here, Jesus was speaking of a comforter that will abide with us forever. I think I like the permanent over the temporary. How many of us like that too? Yes. God in the New Testament dispensation was planning for a permanent presence with us. To walk with us every day. To walk with us every hour. To teach us. To do all manner of things with us. And as we go on, we will begin to see what Jesus said and what other scripture says of the Holy Spirit. But the first thing I want you to know is that he is meant to abide with you forever. So you are at work, the Holy Spirit is there with you. You are on a journey, he is with you. When you face a crisis, he is with you. Jesus said to his disciples, don't worry. They are going to bring you before the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the governors. He said, don't even think of what you are going to say. Because at that same hour, the spirit of the Lord that is in you will tell you what to say. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, I have experienced that a number of times. When it looks as if one has been beaten to a corner. And the argument that people are putting forth looks so genuine and looks so compelling. Just one word from the Lord punctures all the human wisdom. Oh, may that be our portion in Jesus' name. It will be with us forever. 
So we see, if we go further, so we see that Jesus said, He is the comforter. He is the comforter. What does it mean? When you need comfort, it means that you are in distress. You are in a very bad shape and situation. Discouraged. And it looks as if the whole world is against you. Everywhere you turn, there's trouble. Disappointments. At times you ask yourself, does heaven hear the prayers that I pray? But the Holy Spirit within you whispers and bears witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Because that is what comes into your heart when things are so wrong. Am I even a child of God? Does God hear me? The comforter tells you, yes, I hear you loud and clear. But for gold to come out pure, it must go through fire. So God does not close his ear to us. He hears us and he gives us the comfort for the hour. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If not for the comfort of the Spirit in the life of the believer, our despair can at times lead us to think thoughts that are not appropriate. But when he speaks to us, that the word of God says, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. Thus says the Lord in Isaiah. God comforts his people. God comforts his people. Praise the name of the Lord. In verse 17, he says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Is the spirit of truth. There is the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The truth sets free. The truth guides right. But error leads you astray. The Bible says that he is the spirit of a truth and he will guide us into all truth. He will guide us into all truth. Because he knows the mind of God. He knows what is good for the children of God. He will Guide us into it. Many a times, I, I don't just know what to do. And I say, Lord, what do I do in this situation? He guides me. He speaks to me. At times, when I'm even reading the scriptures, I know there's a passage that relates to an issue, but I don't know where it is. He guides me. He points it out. I don't know whether you've experienced that. But that is available for every child of God. Praise the name of the Lord. And these things we have been told because God wants to make his church a functional spiritual entity. God wants to make you functional. We are not just coming because we want to come. God wants to make us a sharp edge to be able to cut cleanly. I pray that the word will sink into our spirit and manifest itself in the name of the Lord Jesus. So John 16 3 says, 13, sorry, that he will guide us into all truth when he is come. He will even remind the disciples and us today of the things that Jesus said. You know, our human memory and capacity is limited. There are things we can store up there. And there are some that just fall off. I remember those days when we were in the university. We had a classmate. Two weeks to the exam. He doesn't comb his hair anymore. So we used to wonder what the problem. He said, you know, the facts are sticking right on top of my hair. If I comb them, 
If I comb my hair, the, some of them will just drop off. So he said, I leave my hair just the way it is so that I don't lose anything. <laughs> oh, we lose things. But we are told he will remind us. He will remind us. So if you are missing anything, ask the reminder to remind you. Praise the name of the Lord. It will guide us into all truth. And it will remind us of everything that Jesus has taught. In verse 16, verse 8, he says, He shall convict the world of sin. He is the spirit of conviction. No man can be saved except there is a conviction by the Holy Spirit. I remember those days in school. We had a revival. I can't remember which one now. Some young people gave their life to Christ. And I was sent to uh, follow them up. So I went to the room where they were. And I started sharing the word of God with them. And telling them that no matter what their life had been, Jesus was ready to receive them and make them his own. And you know what? One of them just burst out crying and crying so ah. So I was wondering, what's the matter? So I said to him, what's the matter? He said, I see myself. Filthy, so filthy, and nobody ever told me that I was so filthy. Ah, uh, that's the spirit of conviction. That's what makes men to see who they are, turn around and say, No, this life is no longer for me. I pray that such spirit of conviction will still be released today because, oh God. The way I see people today, somebody once asked me, are you sure it's the Holy Spirit that saved us that is still saving people today? The only nomenclature that changes in the life of many is that they join the church, but their life remains the same. I remember the story I once read. It was an armed robber. He came into the church and said, I'm not a Christian. But he just went on with his armed robbery. Not in Nigeria anyway. And the pastor called him and said, Why are you still an armed robber? He said, well, there are Christian footballers. There are Christian drivers. There are Christian teachers, Christian doctors. I just felt I should be a Christian and robber. Oh, there's nothing like that. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things become what? New. So the arm robber doesn't remain an arm robber. There is a power of conviction that comes upon him to see that what he's been doing is wrong. And it even goes further. Makes him to make restitution. Remember. In my final year in the secondary school. There was this young man. He was terrible when he was in school. Then he brought cartons and cartons of books. And brought it to the principal. And said, sir, I'm now a Christian. And I'm sorry for the things I did when I was a, a student here. These cartons contain the books I stole from the library. And the principal was so impressed that he brought him to the assembly to address us. That's the meaning of conviction and conversion. Praise the name of the Lord. It will convict the world of sin and judgment. So he's the spirit of conviction. He is also the spirit of grace for salvation. He's the one who by the love of God 
draws men to God. It gives grace for salvation. That you find that the man that was hurting, you say, can this one be saved? Hey, don't write anybody off. When the Holy Spirit convicts, he gives grace for salvation. He's the one who speaks comfort to the sinner and says, though your sins be red as crimson, though it be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And the sinner says to himself, you mean I still have hope with God? And the Spirit says, yes, you have. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. When you have become a Christian, the Holy Spirit becomes the spirit of prayer and supplication. A spirit of prayer and supplication. Romans 8.26 tells us that we do not know how to pray. If you want to be an effective Christian in prayers, then you must have the acquaintance of the Holy Spirit. You must make him your friend. You must allow him to indwell you, for he is the spirit of prayer and supplication. Let's see what the scripture says there. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. But we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He helps us. And you know what? The Bible says that the Spirit searcheth the mind of God. And he knows the appropriate words that get God's attention. And so he makes for us intercession with groanings that cannot be uttered. But whatever he utters finds a place in the ears of God. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, they will say of a man, Friday, go and speak to him. We know he has, you have his ear. And many have taken advantage of that. They know when Friday comes to me, some things will be done. Praise the Lord. And they say at times to I do go and speak to him. You have his ear. Hey, listen to this. The Holy Ghost has God's ear. Anything he says, God listens. Because he knows the appropriate things to say. I pray that God will give you this realm of prayer. That from you will flow out things you may not understand. But the spirit of God is issuing them forth like a spring. Into God's presence. And they are finding acceptance. And is moving heaven to act on your behalf. Spirit of prayer and supplication. Guides us to pray in the will of God. Scripture says, when we pray in his will, he hears us. That's the meaning of effective praying. An effectual praying. Effective praying is using the appropriate word and getting the appropriate result. Effective praying and effectual praying. That's what God wants his people to have. The prayer should not just be vapor that disappears after it has been uttered. It should be words that last and brings effects. Praise the name of the Lord. It should be words that you yourself will remember what you uttered 
so that you can recognize the effects of your utterance. There are many people prayers that people pray. Immediately they finish praying, they can't even remember what they prayed. That's not prayer. And heaven will never be serious with that. Hello? I hope you understand what I'm saying. If you can't be serious about what you prayed, heaven will not be serious about it. Effective and effectual prayer. In John 16, the last part of it is, it says that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of revelation. And he will show us things to come. This is a wonderful provision that God has made for the church. He puts us on notice so that nothing happens without our knowing before it happens. The church is, to a large extent today, blind because this ministry of the Spirit is not allowed or is not manifest in the church. It's the Spirit of Revelation. It tells you of things that are now and things that are to come. That's where the prophetic ministry comes in. If you go to Acts chapter 11, verse 27, Acts 11, verse 27, downwards. Is it coming? And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Next. And there stood one of them named Agabus. And signified by the spirit that there should be a great death throughout all the world. Which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Next. Then the disciples. Every man according to his ability did coming to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea. A famine was coming. But before it came, God gave notice. Prophet Agabus came and said, there is going to be a famine and it's going to have effects upon the whole world. Before COVID-19 broke out, there was one man by the Spirit of God prophesied and said, I see a disease coming. It's coming from a place like China and it's going to affect the whole world. He saw it. He saw it. God puts his people on notice so that they are not taken by surprise. If you also go to the same Acts of the Apostle, chapter 21, verse 8. Acts 21, verse 8. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet, named again, who is Agabus. <laughs> I don't know if he's the one who, has, who established Gabus. And when he had come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost, so that so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owned this girdle, and shall deliver him 
into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So Agabus saw in the spirit that Paul going to Jerusalem, they were going to arrest him, bind him, and hand him over to the Roman authority. And so people started persuading him. Please, Paul, let's change course. Instead of going to Jerusalem, we can go elsewhere. This trouble can be averted. When God puts us on notice, things are averted. Praise the name of the Lord. When he says to you, don't, don't go on a journey, it means there's danger on the road. Praise the name of the Lord. When he says to you, don't go into this relationship, it means that somewhere along the way it will crash land. Let's listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church, to his people, so that we will not act in error. I said there is the Spirit of truth, and there is the spirit of error. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In verse 14 of chapter 16, John, we are told that he will glorify Jesus. He will take that which is of Jesus and tell the church. Hey, in this place I said, that makes the Holy Ghost the P.R.O. of heaven. He glorifies Jesus. He promotes Jesus. He rehearses the word of Jesus in the heart of his church. All he desires to do is to lift up Jesus. And that's why, why Paul says, no man call him. Jesus are caused if he's, he has the spirit of God. Because the spirit of God will always glorify Jesus. He is also the spirit of power. He is the spirit of power. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Are you in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power? He said, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria. And Unto the uttermost part of the earth. You shall receive power. Nothing demonstrates this more clearly than the life of Peter. The Bible says that for the fear of the Jews, they went and hid themselves in the upper room. That's where they were hiding. But Acts chapter 2 breaks forth like this. And when the day of Pentecost was come. <laughs> something marvelous happened. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was come. Or fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were seated. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 
it was while they were doing this that some people came near and said, this is but the ninth hour of the day. These men are drunk. They don't booze. Who gave them fresh brown wine at this hour? And then Peter stands up in verse 14 to say, no, 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 these men are not drunk. Something had just happened and I want to remind you of it. That the prophet said, in the last days, Prophet Joel, that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. The young men shall see vision. Old men will dream dreams. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I've said this before all the old crocodiles that are holding Nigeria ransom. May God displace them to go and sleep so that men with vision can move our nation forward. Did I say anything? No. Because old men are to dream dreams and they only dream when they sleep. Am I correct? May God make them sleep and sleep permanently to be dreaming dreams. So that the young men with vision can lift our nation up. So Joel tells, Peter tells them, this is the prophecy of Joel. It has come to pass today. And this gift is for you and for your children. And as many as the Lord our God shall call. Praise the name of the Lord. So the people who were afraid and hiding somewhere suddenly found courage to come and stand and preach. And on that day, 3,000 people gave their lives to God. 3,000. I'm begging God to give me 500. In one sermon. So that I can fill the gallery. And this downstairs. You understand what I'm saying. So he must have needed. A church of this capacity. Three times. To accommodate the first convert. Of that day. That's power my God. That's power. And I pray that such grace. Will come upon us again. Papa held a crusade at Tavawa Balewa Square. Over a million people were there. Over a million. And somewhere along the line, Babangida sent a message that that crusade must stop. They got afraid that one man could mobilize over a million people. I pray that that power of mobilization by the spirit for the kingdom will come upon us again in the name of Jesus. But you could see that all fear that held them hostage until then disappeared. May the Lord break all the shackles that hold us down today. The spirit of unbelief that doesn't allow God to move in our lives as it ought to. That it would die in the mighty name of Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 to 11. We see that the spirit is the giver of gifts. The giver of gifts. We are one body, but many parts. That's what the scripture says. And God gives to every man what he thinks the person can manage. The reason he does this, like I said at the beginning, is that the church might be a functional spiritual entity. place where there is diversity of gifts, talents, that nothing is lacking. Nothing is lacking. Everything needed is present. When everything like that 
needed his presence. That is heaven on earth. Hallelujah. I pray that God will make our church heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. And I pray that all of us will go on bended knees asking God. Send us revival. Send us your spirit that gives gifts to men to make heaven on earth. Oh, when there is walking of miracles, the healing of diseases, my God, then nobody will be sick. That puts many hospitals out of business. Many years ago, Mama Mazua gave a testimony that before he became a Christian, she became a Christian. She won an award in a hospital as the best patient because she was always coming. She paid most money, I guess, and they said, this patient must receive an award. May that not be your portion. He said that changed when she gave her life to Christ. And everything that is taking you every month, every week to the doctors, I silence today by the power of the Holy Ghost. I destroy it based in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are set loose from the grip of affliction. Heaven on earth. Heaven on earth. Where everything is present. Where everything is present. God's power is made manifest. To his glory. All we say. Or what we can say. In the confines of this service. Are just the tip of the iceberg. John said. If everything that Jesus did. Were to be written. Is that all the libraries of the world will not be big enough to contain the books that were to be written. But this thing are written that we might know that Jesus is the Son of God. These things we have said today, we say so that we might know that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Is the Spirit of power. Is the Spirit of grace. Spirit of truth. Spirit of anointing. For the church to be whom God wants us to be. Shall we stand up on our feet, please? I want you to pray this morning and say, Lord, whatever is missing in my life, I invite the Holy Spirit to fill in. He is the giver. Whatever you want of the fruit of the spirit. Paul said, covet, covet, covet. That is to say, be greedy for once. Covet spiritual gifts. Tell God, fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. Fill me up. I lift my cup, Lord. Come and quench the testing of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me here. Fill my cup, fill it up. Fill me up. Lord, we ask that the emptiness in our lives will be filled up. We ask that, Lord, the Holy Spirit will indeed today, this very day, fill us up. Engage us for the kingdom that our lives will never be the same. That we will run with your vision in a new light and by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
Thank you, precious Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. 